All right, again, just want to praise every Lord for everybody coming out here this morning, for joining us on the Internet. Just a couple announcements before the message. Uh, May the 14th, mark your calendars, Daylight Savings Time. Amen. We also have our next board meeting members. You want to be here for that at 530 before the service starts. Uh, May the 18th through the 20th is the ladies' prayer advance. Okay, so ladies, if you're interested in going, it's uh, still not too late to sign up. Let us know. We'll be happy to get you registered. Uh, also, we've talked several times, have made announcements about this, about having uh, uh, starting a committee for uh, doing the parking lot. And so we'll be looking to do that here in the coming weeks, just getting through uh, a number of the things going on already. And so I'll uh, ask everyone that's interested uh, at uh, one of the morning services coming up just to stay after, and we'll set a schedule to start meeting thereafter, okay? All right, any other comments, questions, thoughts, concerns before we turn it over for the message? All right, Pastor Bob, if you would. All right. I, I forgot about you doing the announcements. Uh, I thought you were going to do a special. I thought, is that, is that why he's standing here? Is he going to sing a special? A solo. Wow. Wow. Well, <laughs> I thank the men that came out yesterday. I think we had a good time, good breakfast. And uh, good discussion, always is. It's amazing, every Men of Valor meeting, we solve all the world's problems. <laughs> if we could just get people to listen to us, right? <laughs> we solve all the world's problems. Well, let's go to the Lord in prayer. We'll get into the Word of God. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this morning, this beautiful morning that you've given us, Lord. And especially with the past few weekends uh, being nasty and miserable out and Lord, we just truly thank you for beautiful days like today. We thank you, Father, that you're a God that's still in control, Lord. Uh, but we're in a nation that's out of control. We're in a nation, Father, that needs a touch of God, that needs a revival. Lord, without a Holy Ghost sent revival, I don't uh, feel like there's much hope for our nation, Lord. And I really believe that we're in a mad rush of 100 days till judgment. I believe things that we're seeing uh, in Texas and everywhere else is just beginning, just tremors of what's on the horizon. And Lord, why I don't want bad things to happen, I have to be honest with myself and with your word uh, that you're not going to put up with our shenanigans much longer. And so Father, I pray. I pray for a move of God. I pray for a move of God amongst your people, Lord, that we'd be more like you, Father that we would really hunger and thirst for the Word and, and grow in, uh, to be like Christ and having a real power in our life, Father. Lord, I pray that you'd be with me now in the moments to come. Fill me with the Holy Ghost. Cleanse me from all unrighteousness. And please, please, Lord, speak through me this morning to every heart here. In Jesus' most precious and holy name I pray, amen. All right, so if you take your Bible, repeat after me, I believe that this is the Word of God. I believe every Word of God is true. Because it's impossible for God to lie. Amen. Now we're ready for the Word of God. By simply doing that simple act, I'm sure that the powers that be in Washington right now would consider us all lunatic terrorist, but we don't really care what they think, amen? We only care about what God thinks. And so we're going to start this morning in Psalm 101, and I want to talk to you this morning about wisdom and the importance of wisdom. Uh, we live in a society where we have an abundance of knowledge. We have more knowledge now than ever before. And I purposely brought the cell phone up here just to point out Anything you need to know is all I have to do is, is, you know, Google it or whatever, and the cell phone can tell me, whatever. There's so much knowledge. There's more knowledge in this cell phone, or more technology in this cell phone than there was in the whole Apollo mission when they sent man to moon. I mean, that blows my mind to think that there's more technology right there than when they sent the man to the moon. So knowledge is really not our problem. We have a ton of knowledge. We have extremely intelligent people. I mean, I'm amazed at, at game. I like to watch uh, game shows like Jeopardy. I'm not a really big fan of like Wheel of Fortune because that's kind of like guess. But, uh, but I like, like the ones where you gotta think, you know? I just love Jeopardy. I really hope Ken Jennings replaces Alex Trebek. I think he'd be a great replacement for him. 
But I'm fascinated about how these people know the stuff. They know all that. I mean, it's like, how do you know that? It's just absolutely incredible. And they have this new, uh, I don't know what day of the week it is, but this program called The Chase, where, where they answer these incredible questions and the intelligent guys try to track them down and overtake them. Now really, when it boils down to it, most of that information is useless, because it's really not going to help you in everyday life. But it just shows you how much intelligence people have. How, how, how intelligent we are. And yet with all the intelligence that we have, we are absolutely incapable of deciding basic things of right and wrong. Am I a male or a female? We can't even decide that. Is that absolutely incredible? With all this knowledge, with all this intelligence, even when we had that, that health secretary that was here in Pennsylvania, there's no doubt that that individual was a very intelligent person. They didn't become a doctor just because they were an idiot. They had to pass exams. But yet with all that knowledge, that person couldn't tell whether or not they was a boy or a girl. Unbelievable. So what is our problem? If it's not that we need more knowledge, then what is our problem? Our problem is that we need wisdom. We don't have wisdom. It's not for a lack of knowledge, it's for a lack of wisdom. Now, in the world, you kind of expect that, because the world isn't going to think the way that God thinks and the way that we think. But what disturbs me is more and more on a growing, daily growing basis, I see the same thing happen amongst Christians. Christians are gaining more knowledge than they ever had before, but they have no wisdom. They don't have no wisdom. They don't even have basic common sense anymore. I mean, there's no doubt that the average young person today probably has a lot more knowledge than their great, great, great grandparents did. But they are nowhere close to having the wisdom that their great, great grandparents did. And I would much rather have people that have wisdom and little knowledge than great knowledge and no wisdom. Amen? And so we need wisdom. We need knowledge, but we need wisdom even more. In Psalm 101, he says something here that I find is very interesting. He says, I will sing of mercy and judgment unto thee, O Lord, will I sing. I will behave myself, now notice the word, wisely. I will behave myself wisely in a perfect way. Uh, oh, when wilt thou come unto me? I will walk within my house with a perfect heart. See, he's not going to be one thing outside the home and another thing inside the home. I'm going to walk with a perfect, uh, within my house with a perfect heart. I will set no wicked thing before mine eyes. Remember when they used to call it a television set? I guess I'll leave that alone. I'm not telling you to get rid of your TVs, but I, I would say, suggest that you be careful what you watch. Amen? Amen. I will set no wicked thing before mine eyes. I hate the work of them that turn aside. I hate the work of them that turn aside. It's one reason I could never be a Democrat, because I hate what they stand for. I hate the work. People say, well, you're a Christian, and you're a Pastor, you see how that's jumping like crazy? Yeah, yeah. I don't know why, but it, maybe it's amen in me. That artificial part, the artificial part in there is like in the message. Yeah, preach it, brother. I'm glad I'm joined to you. <laughs> <laughs> Craziness. All right. I, I was setting a wicked thing before my night. I hate the work of them that turn aside. I hate the work. There, as Christians, there are things that we need to hate. Amen. We need to hate every evil way. Because God does. God hates every evil way. God hates a false balance. That might be a good message someday and all the things that God hates. Because people act like, well, God doesn't hate anything. God loves everything. No, he doesn't. There's things that God hates that he calls our abomination that he despises. And we should despise and hate those same things. Now, notice he's not talking about the people, but he's talking about the work. He says, I hate the work of them. In other words, you, you hate the sin, but you love the sinner. Now, I had a person one time, a lost person, tried to tell me, oh, that, that, you're being uh, contradictory. I said, no, I'm not being contradictory. 
I love you, man. I want you to become a Christian. I want you to, to turn from this lifestyle of sin so that when you die, you, you'll go to heaven. Come to know Christ as your Savior and go to heaven when you die. There's nothing contrary about that. And what you are doing, while you think you're finding pleasure in it, it's hurting you. But you don't realize it yet. But you will someday. What you're giving yourself to is hurting you. It's destroying you. And if there's anything that's been proven but silenced, is that these alternate lifestyles are destroying people. They're not fulfilled in that. Most of them don't even want to be in that lifestyle, but find themselves trapped within it. It's destroying them. The same thing with drugs and alcohol and all these other things uh, that stimulate people. Uh, they're deceived by, that, by the fact that these things are providing them with a certain amount of peace and they feel good. No, it's deception. You're becoming bondage to alcohol and to drugs. And then you become useless. You, you, you're no good to anybody. You're no good to yourself even. And so I hate, he says, he says here in verse 3, he says, I hate the work of them that turn aside. It shall not cleave to me. It's not going to be a part of who I am. So this is a credible psalm, and we could just kind of keep going down through that. But the thing that really jumped out to get my attention was in verse 2, where he says, I will behave myself wisely in a perfect way. And David, in the, uh, a number of places in Samuel, a couple of places in Samuel, it talks about when David was around King Saul, that he purposely behaved himself wisely. And we as Christians, we're living in a time where we need to behave ourselves wisely. Amen? I mean, I get up here and I'll make jokes, and in private I'll make jokes and, and kid about things, but I also understand that, uh, that making jokes about things isn't going to make things better. I need to behave myself wisely. I need to attack the problem honestly and wisely. Amen? Be, be, have uh, exercise a certain amount of wisdom. And so wisdom is incredibly important. In Psalms, in, uh, excuse me, in Proverbs chapter 4, verse 7, the Word of God tells us wisdom is the principal thing. And, and with wisdom, you know, get understanding, amen? But wisdom is the principal thing. In other words, the most important thing is wisdom. He's telling us that we need to pursue wisdom. Isaiah 29, 14 warns us that wisdom can perish. That if we're not careful, we can perish. And I think we see that in the life of Solomon, right? Solomon was considered one of the wisest men that ever lived. But I want to tell you something about Solomon. He did some pretty stupid things. Amen? For the wisest man that ever lived, he did some pretty stupid things. That's because wisdom can slip. If we don't stay focused, if we don't keep on pursuing wisdom, if we don't keep on pursuing understanding, then the wisdom that we have can slip. And we can start acting in non-wise ways. Look at David. There's no doubt in my mind that David was an extremely wise person. But it's pretty obvious when you look at the account with him and Bathsheba that he had a lapse in judgment. The wisdom was no longer governing him. Wisdom was no longer controlling him. He was being controlled by his flesh. He was being controlled by, the, by his evil desires. And then he ends up doing something that I know down the road he regretted. Oh, he might have enjoyed himself that night. It wasn't too long after that when he heard Bathsheba tell him that, David, I'm with child. I'm with child. And he knew he was in trouble. He had a lapse in wisdom, a lapse in judgment, a lapse in discernment. So if we don't stay sharp, if we don't stay aware, then we can fall into trouble. And this has happened to a lot of people. They get comfortable with, uh, with themselves. They attain a certain amount of Bible knowledge or a certain amount of knowledge in general. And what does the Bible tell us about knowledge? It says, knowledge puffeth up. I think we have a whole generation of Christians right now that, that this knowledge that they have has puffed them up. And then before they know it, they're falling into sin, they're falling into all kinds of other evil practices that you would never thought that they would be a part of. Um, and I'm always taken by surprise by people. And, and it doesn't, it's, not to, it's not to come down harsh on anybody. 
but I, I, I'm gonna, I hesitate to even say this, but I think it may be common knowledge by now about Ra Ravi Zachariah. He, he's with the Lord now. But he got in some major trouble before he died. He made some huge mistakes. Man, I did not see that coming. Amen? I did not see that coming. I remember as a young Christian uh, getting uh, ready to go into work every morning. I was in the military, and as I was getting my boots on, I'd always listen to uh, Jimmy Swagger in the morning. I just, man, I just liked it. I just kind of liked the way that he preached and stuff. I had no clue that it, not too long from that time when I was watching it, that he was going to end up getting in trouble with, uh, with women. So what happens? It's not, you know, there's wisdom, if we're not careful, if, if we think that we stand, let him that thinketh he standeth take heed lest he fall. Isn't that what Paul warns us? If we don't stay hot on the trail of wisdom, hot on the trail of a pursuit after God, a pursuit after God's heart, then we can lose the wisdom that we have and we can do things that we never thought we would do. And so wisdom is important. Wisdom is the principal thing, but, but wisdom can perish if we're not careful. And then we have to have the discernment that goes along with wisdom in which we can decipher between what is good wisdom and what is false wisdom. Uh, 1 Corinthians 1.21 tells us, the world by wisdom knew not God. In other words, this world has a wisdom, but it's not a wisdom that's ever going to help them understand and know who God is. And yet we have all these religions out there, and we have people uh, chasing all these things. In fact, now the buzzword isn't religion anymore, it's spirituality. You know, everybody's spiritual these days. But it's all a lack of wisdom, it's a false wisdom. The world by wisdom knew not God. Why? Because the world's wisdom was a false wisdom. Also in 1 Corinthians chapter 3 and verse 19, it says the wisdom, uh, uh, the wisdom that is, I'm going to have to look it up because I, mis, I miswrote that down. Look at 1, uh, 1 Corinthians 3.19 real quick with me. I'm, I'm quoting more verses than looking them up because right now it's kind of easier with all this apparatus on me. All right, 1 Corinthians 3.19, there the Word of God tells us, for the wisdom of this world is what? Foolishness. It's foolishness with God. For it is written, He taketh the wise in their own craftiness. And again, the Lord knoweth the thoughts of the wise, that they are vain. Therefore, let no man glory in men, for all things are yours. And the foolishness, the wisdom of this world is foolishness with God. It's foolishness with God. And so there's this false wisdom. There's this wisdom that is of this world that cannot know God, that as God looks at this wisdom that men have, it's absolutely foolishness. There's no doubt that if we were to go to Washington, that all those knuckleheads in there, that were put there by the knucklehead American people would all think that they, their wisdom, that they're pretty smart, that they've got a platform and a plan that's going to help America. There's no doubt in my mind that Joe Biden believes that he has this plan that's somehow going to deliver America. And I'm telling you, why, why they call it the, the first hundred days? I'm calling it the first hundred days to judgment. Because every executive order that that man signs is a step further away from God. And I'm telling you, the linchpin is going to be when we backstab Israel. Once that happens, you better find a place to hide because the hammer is going to fall hard. Amen? And I'm telling you, it is coming. A hundred days till judgment. Just mark it down. I'm not a prophet. I'm not trying to prophesy anything. But I simply believe that we're marching toward a hundred days to judgment. And this guy, in his mind, he thinks he's doing the right thing. But God says it's foolishness. God says it's foolishness. It's not wisdom. It's not the right type of wisdom. This is a false wisdom. This is a wrong wisdom. Look over in uh, uh, James chapter 3 real quick. In James chapter 3, we see two different types of wisdoms d displayed there. The, an evil, hellish, devilish wisdom. Uh, Rome, uh, excuse me, James chapter 3, uh, look at uh, verse number, um, verse number uh, 
13, who is a wise man and endued with knowledge among you? Let him show out of a good conversation his works with meekness of wisdom. But if you have bitter envy and strife in your hearts, glory not and lie not against the truth. This wisdom, now notice he calls it wisdom, but it's not the right type of wisdom. He says, this wisdom descendeth not from above, but is earthly, sensual, devilish. It's earthly. It's on this plane, this fallen human plane. It's sensual. In other words, it's from the flesh. It's motivated of the flesh. And it's devilish. It's satanic. Amen? It's satanic. Now, I don't know if you've been paying attention to some things, but you have, you have uh, key politicians that are wanting to claim all Republicans as terrorists. Are you telling me that that's not a, a godly wisdom? That's a devilish, sensualist, sensual wisdom. That's not from God. You, you got people out there uh, that are supposed to be the vice president of the United States that, that's saying we need to go after all the Trump supporters. I mean, what are you talking? Where does this come from? This is not wisdom from above. This is sensual. This is what's pleasing to them. This is their self righteous thinking, amen? And it's far off the base. Now, the thing that disturbs me is that they, uh, these same people will push so hard to get President Trump impeached, and still after that didn't work, and you guys heard the joke, right? I've seen it on, on, on Facebook, where he, uh, Trump calls uh, Pelosi, and she says, uh, hello, who is it? He says, this is uh, Owen, Owen who? And he says, Owen too. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, and that's a good joke. You, you'll, it'll catch up to you sooner or later. <laughs> but, uh, but that ain't enough. They're still trying to bury him. They're still trying to do stuff to him. But the hypocrisy with all these people that are going after him, saying he's inciting riots and violence, these were the same people who were inciting riots and violence when Antifa was burning cities down and attacking federal buildings over in Washington, for crying out loud. These are the same people that were demonstrating and encouraging all this bad behavior. Now, I'll never say that it was right to go after the Capitol building. I'll never say that that was a good move. That was a stupid move. You shouldn't have done that. But two wrongs don't make a right, right? It, it, it was wrong what the other side did, and, and the way that they're going about everything is hypocritical, amen? And my own personal opinion my own personal opinion, if you ever, you ever look into history, especially the Nazi party, because right now there's a lot that we can learn from Nazi Germany about what's happening in America today, from gun control to book control, book burnings that haven't happened yet, but they're coming, to all silencing people. There was one time where the Reichstag building, which is like the capital building in Germany, is attacked, and, and uh, they destroy the building. And the Nazis do it, but the Nazis blame the communists because they had a thing against the communists. They wanted to get rid of the communists so that they can have all the control. And it worked. And this is what I believe happened at the Capitol building. I think, yeah, there were some Trump supporters that got caught up in the emotion, but I believe in all my heart that there was a lot of people that were pushing things that were nothing more than false flags. They were going in there as Trump supporters, but they weren't Trump supporters. They wanted to make Trump look bad. And that's what happened, amen? It was history repeating itself. But since people don't like to learn anything from history, we always keep repeating it, amen? And so folks, there's just this, this danger out there of all this knowledge and no wisdom. And God talks about there's a wisdom, but this wisdom uh, that people have is, is earthly, it's sensual, it's devilish. For where envy and strife is, there is confusion in every evil work. But the wisdom that is from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, and easy to be entreated, full of mercy and good fruits, without partiality, without hypocrisy. And the fruit of the righteous, uh, and the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace of them that make peace. And so I'm just reading those verses. I just want to show you that there's a difference. There's a true wisdom. And there's a false wisdom. 
There's a wisdom that's of the flesh, that's of this world, that's devilish, a satanic wisdom, and it's this satanic wisdom that's fueling our global society today, and then there's this true wisdom that's from God. And, and here, I don't know about you, I, I see things that just make you like go, I wonder. Like, everybody's all worried about the, uh, the, the climate can, uh, change and all that's happening with the weather. Did you realize that in the weather report the other day that Joe Calhoun said that 76% of the United States was covered with snow? And I said, well, that's strange because if we've got this seriously bad global warming problem, then how in the world can 76% of the United States be covered with snow? Doesn't that just make sense to you? Now, now the other side will just, you know, mock you and say, oh, you don't believe in science. You're right, I don't believe in science falsely so-called. In other words, they say that they're science, but they're really not science. It's all they are is a bunch of garbage to promote what they're trying to promote, which is a globalism, and to silence conservatives and to gain more control. Amen? And, and so we could go on and on about all this stuff, but as all this stuff simply proves is that there's two types of wisdom in this world. There's a wisdom that's of God, there's a godly wisdom, and there is a wisdom that's of the devil, and it's sensual, and it's earthly. And they're both competing, amen? Now there's knowledge, greater knowledge now than there ever was before, but knowledge hasn't helped us, it hasn't saved us, it hasn't gotten us anywhere. It's just led to more sin and more problems. Because knowledge puff it up, and knowledge without wisdom is absolutely useless. And that's where we are today. And the only one that can change the tide of things is us, Christians, you and me. As we begin to act wisely, as we begin to act with wisdom in everything we do, as we begin to pass wisdom on to our children, and our grandchildren, and our great-grandchildren, it's going to be up to us to salvage everything, amen? I mean, you, you can't trust the school. The school is gone. It has been gone for hundreds of years now. I mean, you think about some of these great colleges at one time. They were uh, established to train men in the ministry to be missionaries to, to Indians and missionaries to, to other people, and they were training pastors. You think of Harvard. You think of Yale. You think of Princeton. And you look at some of the old, old symbolism and how God was exalted. But folks, all that stuff left those universities a long time ago. And they don't stand for that anymore. Now it's all humanism. It's a humanistic thought that's being promoted. It's this humanistic agenda. It's this globalism. And, and we're being forced. This globalism is just constantly being forced upon us. And the media is controlled. We don't have a free press anymore. You've got to understand. We don't have a free press. We have a press that's owned by the globalist. And because the press is owned by the globalist, they're never going to tell you the truth. Amen? They're never going to tell you what is right. They're only going to promote their agenda. Uh, think about this. Please, please, people, hear me out. Because I'm begging what you don't fall for the lie. Listen. Just because Channel 8 brings doctors on that are going to tell you that it's absolutely safe to take the, the vaccination, it doesn't mean they're telling you the truth, amen? They're lying to you. And I'm telling you, that about a year from now, we're going to know. But then it's going to be too late. Too late. And there's already over 40,000 Americans that have suffered severe problems. And did you realize that, to, that when... When uh, Hank Aaron, the home run king of years ago, when he got his injection for the COVID-19, he was bragging about how he was going to show everybody how it was safe. And then two weeks later, he died. Oh, but those are just natural causes. Of course you would say that if you didn't want there to be no correlation between it. But I want to tell you, Fauci and Bill Gates and a number of these other guys are getting extremely wealthy by this stuff. Don't fall prey to the misinformation. Don't just because a doctor says that this is okay, that that makes it right, that it's okay. Amen? 
And so we're living in this society where there's, there's no wisdom and there's no free press. The press is owned by the globalists and the, pl- the press is only going to push and tell us what we want. And it's not just the press from the standpoint of what the newspaper and the news networks tell you, but it's in the media. It's in the movies that are being made. It's in the movies that are being show, shown. Uh, Pamela likes to watch the, those Hallmark movies and uh, you know, I'm not getting on her for that. She could do worse things, I suppose. But I, <laughs> I'm just not a Hallmark guy. I don't know. Amen? To me, a sappy love story that's good for men is Brian's song. Amen? You know, when Brian Piccolo dies of cancer. That's a true story. Amen? That, but, but anyway... I, I, they, I seen on one of those programs, they didn't, now they didn't show them doing anything, they just introduced the topic, a homosexual couple. So if, they've, if they introduced a homosexual couple in the movie, then that tells me that it's not going to be too far down the road before it becomes a thing. What about Disney? Oh, Disney's safe, right? Well, Disney's debating whether or not that this this frost or whatever thing, latest Disney thing they had out, whether this uh, leading princess should become a lesbian. So what's that teaching our children if leading princesses in Disney are going to become lesbians? Do you see what I'm saying? That the industry is being controlled. So if wisdom is going to survive in America, if wisdom has any chance of making it in America, it is going to be because Christians exemplify what wisdom is. And when people can observe, can look and observe the effects of false wisdom and the effects of true wisdom, then I believe in my heart they'll gravitate toward what is true. But if, they, if the lines are blurred and they have no, no clue of what real wisdom is, then they'll continue on in the darkness. This is why it's so important for us to exercise wisdom, to behave ourselves wisely, to be wise in everything that we do. Amen? Now, how do I obtain this wisdom? You know, Proverbs talks about searching for it, and that's pretty basic. Yeah, we need to do that. We need to search for this wisdom. We need to hunger for this wisdom. We need to ask God to give us wisdom. I remember when I was a new Christian, I didn't know anything about the Bible, nothing at all. And one of the things I would pray on on a daily basis is, God, I need wisdom and understanding. Because I didn't understand anything. And I've told you guys this story. Man, I grew up in in a neighborhood that was like a city-like atmosphere. I didn't even know what a yolk was. You know, to me, a yolk was an egg, an egg yolk. It's not even spelt the same. It's completely different. You know, I didn't realize that two animals brought together were yoked together. I didn't know that. I remember I dated a girl that lived on this little farm. And she got on me because she said, she said, what are you doing? I said, I want to ride one of your cows. And she said, you better stay away from that cow right now. I said, my dad will kill you. Yeah, I had no clue. She told me, she said, she, well, I wanted to go, let, let's go do something. And she said, I can't. She said, I said, why, why can't you? She said, i got to milk the goats. I said, what are you, crazy? You don't milk goats. You milk cows. And she said, no, you got to milk goats. I thought she was lying to me. I said, you're lying to me. If you don't want to go with me, just say you don't want to go with me. Don't be telling me you got to milk the goats for crying out loud. Nobody milks goats. So you milk a goat, that's when they're going to kick you. And, and so then she took me to the backyard, to the barn. Sure enough, you milk goats. I didn't know that. <laughs> hey, listen, I was, as a kid growing up, where you got the milk? Cumberland Farms, A&P. You know, that's where the milk came from. I had no clue about it. I didn't know about that stuff. You know, I was ignorant. And so I pray. I said, God, I need wisdom. I need to understand it. And folks, this is what we have to do. We have to come to this point where we realize that we need wisdom. And so in James chapter 1 and verse number 5, he says, If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God. So wisdom, obtaining wisdom, begins with acknowledging that you need it. Now this is the problem. We're so proudful in America, we don't want to acknowledge that we have a need about anything, right? 
Oh, no, I'm a pretty smart guy. Don't, don't worry, I'm, I'm all right. Like, men, we're good at this, right? We're not going to stop and ask for directions because we've got to prove that we know where we're going. You know, we're our own GPS before they had GPS, you know. We just find our way. I remember that time when we were driving from uh, Boston. We are going down to see my parents, and, and the traffic was backed up on one of those bridges going into New York there. And, uh, and I said, don't worry about it, Pamela. I've got a shortcut through Brooklyn that we're going to take. Man, I got us lost big time. And she's like, well, well, why don't you stop and ask somebody? I said, are you kidding me? I said, number one, I wouldn't want to do that because I don't want to show that I don't know where I'm going. And two, there ain't no way I'm doing that in Brooklyn. Yo, know, we might as well just give them the car right now. You know, I'm not going to do that. You know, but so we get that way. We don't want to humble ourselves and admit that we need help. Pamela's always getting on me about this. You never ask for help. And so my arm's messed up. Oh, man, you should have saw this. My arm's messed up. And Pam was busy with something else, and, and, and i got to get this T-shirt on, right? And I'm trying to get this T-shirt on. Long story short, this arm is like it is with the T-shirt half rolled around. This one arm is twisted back this way, and I'm just tied in a knot. I don't know how I got it all messed up like that. And she said, I told you to just wait for me. Why didn't you just wait for me? Well, not only do I not like having, uh, you know, admitting that I need help, but I also don't have patience. Amen. <laughs> that was it. And, and I, don't, I usually don't talk much about Facebook unless it's in a negative way because I hate Facebook. But, uh, but I saw this thing. Somebody put this thing on Facebook with this little baby boy. And he opened the door for his mother or something. And she said, who taught you, who taught you to, to, to say ladies first? Who taught you that? She said, that little boy, because kid, little kids are honest, amen? Hank, Hank said ladies first because ladies don't have patience, but the gentlemen have all the patience. It was cute and funny coming from a little three-year-old, but you ladies know that that's not true. <laughs> you know it's the other way around, amen? But, uh, but anyway, you know, we, we've got to come to the point where we're willing to say, hey, I need help, God. I need wisdom. I need wisdom about these things that are going on in my life. I need wisdom about how do I live in the country and the direction that it's going and everything that's happening. Uh, God, I need your wisdom now. How do I approach this situation? I have to have wisdom. So I need to acknowledge that I need wisdom. So he says, if any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God that giveth to all men liberally. Now here's your confidence. You come to God, say, God, I, I, I need wisdom. I lack wisdom. I, I, I need your understanding. I need your help. And you've got to understand that God's commitment to you is that he, he that giveth to all men liberally. In other words, God is going to give you the wisdom that you so desire, and He's going to give it to you in abundance if you're willing to, to take it. Amen? If you're willing to search it out. If you're willing to dive into the Word of God and gain God's perspective. And this is the problem with us getting wisdom from God, is when God does show us something, it goes against the grain of how we think things should be, and right away we don't want to accept it. Well, I don't know, God. I don't know about that. I don't know about that method. You know, think about when God tells uh, Joshua, how are you going to take Jericho? Are well, you going to march around every day around the walls, and then the last day you're going to march seven times, and the walls are going to fall down? That's the most ridiculous battle plan I ever heard. But that's perfect wisdom when it comes from a perfect God that knows exactly what He's going to do and how He's going to do it. Amen? I mean, we've been praying for revival and for God to shake up the church and the God to do something in the church in America. And at the same time that we're praying this, somehow we believe that Donald Trump was linked to it. And that somehow if he retains his office, then things can continue on and get better and better. And God is saying that's a lie. He says your first problem is you trust in Donald Trump and you're not trusting me. Your second problem is I've got a way to do things that are a little bit different than your way. 
And my way of turning the church around may be shaking it up first. Amen? Because I'm telling you, as believers in the United States of America, we are in desperate need of some heavy-duty chastisement and shaking up. We're in desperate need of God taking us out to the woodshed and giving us a good old-fashioned spanking. Amen? And to get us redirected, refocused, and on course. And to knock off all this foolishness and shenanigans that's going on all over the country. And to give it in to every wind of false doctrine that's out there. And so God needs to step up and say, listen, this is how I'm going to get the church where it needs to be. I'm going to have to give it a little bit of chastisement. Now even what I said right there, there's a bunch of people on TV, preachers, that would say, oh no, God doesn't do that. God's not going to do that. I'm, I've differed with you, amen? And you just hold on long enough. You just might see God do it, amen? And so we've got all this craziness going on in this world. And so God's plan may be, listen, I want there to be a little bit of persecution. I want you to feel the heat. I want you to feel like you're losing everything because then when you've lost everything, you'll know that I'm the only thing that you need. And so as a church body in, in America, we have to go through this. We have to walk this road if we're ever going to see the revival and the type of revival that we need to see. Now what about the lost person? Well, the lost person needs to have all this government stuff put on them so that the economy gets collapsed so that they can begin to see that their Savior is not the U.S. government, but their Savior is the Lord God Almighty. Amen? And through the things that they suffer, perhaps that will bring them to God. Because right now, it's still, no matter how bad you have it in America, right now, America is the best place to be. It's the best place to be. Uh, and people got it good. Extremely good they have it here. They cry like they have it bad, but they don't have it that bad. Amen? They don't have it that bad. Uh, when I see kids walking around with these very expensive items, then you try to tell me that you got it bad? I don't think so. Amen? I don't think so. And so, uh, boy, I'm getting all over the place today. You see what happened? You kept me silent for too long. <laughs> All right. All right. So, listen, what we've been praying for, this may be the way that God wants to bring it about. He gives to all men liberally. And we need wisdom. God wants to give us this wisdom. He's going to give us this wisdom liberally. And abradeth not. And it shall be given him. Abradeth not means that God's not going to mock you for it. You know, I see this a lot with people and somebody asks a question and somebody else thinks it's a stupid question and then they make fun of you for asking that question. You know, you, you see that stuff in school. But I tell you what, when all those years I worked retail, I've seen it happen in retail by grown-ups making fun of us. Oh, look at that ask that stupid question. You know, God's never going to tell you that. Every time you come and say, God, I need wisdom about this, that, or the other thing, he's not going to mock you. He's not going to say, well, how long have you been saved? Well, you, you should have known this by now. You should have this figured out by now. He's not going to do that to you. He's going to give you the wisdom you're looking for. He's going to give it liberally and abrade if not. Now, he tells us that when we ask God, that we have to ask in faith. We have to believe that God is going to answer our prayer and give us the wisdom that we need. He says, but let him that asketh in faith uh, but let him ask in faith nothing wavering. For he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea driven with the wind and tossed. In other words, when you come to God, don't waver. Don't think, well, you know, maybe he's going to answer my prayer. Maybe he's going to give me wisdom on this. I don't know. He might not. He might, not. He might choose to just say nothing. No, he's not going to do that. He wants you to have faith and not doubt. He doesn't want you to waver. This is another problem with Christianity in our country. As there's a lot of talk about faith, but I see more wavering than I do faith. I see more of a trust in the things of this world than in God Himself. Amen? And folks, we've got to get back to this point where we trust God and we pray in faith believing. We pray in faith believing that God is going to do this. 
How many times do we pray about something already knowing, well, God's not going to answer that prayer. Have you done that? You prayed and yet you already just know, I don't know why I'm praying about it. God's not going to do that anyway. Are you, are you, are God put somebody on your heart to witness to and you're going to go talk to them about the Lord, but you already know in your heart they're not going to believe. They're not going to trust God. Folks, that stuff isn't from God. That's from the devil, amen? You need to trust God, step out by faith, and pray believing, amen? Believe that he's going to give you the wisdom that you're desiring. Believe that he's going to answer your prayer. He tells us in verse number 7, For let not that man think that he shall receive anything of the Lord. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. So you look at a man that can't make a decision, a man that's wavering back and forth. God says he's not just unstable in that decision, he's unstable in everything. This is the problem with all our, po our politicians, right? Every single one of our politicians, they waver. They waver because they want to do what's popular. They don't want to do what's right. Now, thank God for Donald Trump. At least even if the decision was wrong, he stayed with it. Amen? He didn't waver back and forth. I want to tell you some guy that does never deserve another Republican vote as long as he lives, and if God would resurrect him and let him live another lifetime, he still doesn't deserve your vote. And that's Pat Toomey, amen? That backstabbing traitor don't deserve a thing. And he's been backstabbing us for a long time. You know, with the gun control and everything else. This ain't nothing new with Toomey. He's a waver. Wave, back and forth, back and forth. In fact, there's a whole bunch of those Republican leaders that need to get voted out and get fresh blood in there that's not going to waver. And so anyway, with the text here, a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. So simply, in a nutshell, what, what am I going to do to get wisdom? Well, I've got to acknowledge that I need it, and I have to ask God for it. And then I have to be willing to search the Scriptures. Amen? If I'll do those things, God will give me the wisdom that I need. Amen? He will. He's bound his oath to it in his word. He'll give you that wisdom that you need. You also need to understand from the first part of the message that there's a false wisdom as well as a true wisdom. Don't get caught up in the false wisdom of this world. And this is why you have to be extremely careful in what you hear on television and what you read in papers, because it's all lies. What was that? Oh, that was probably God saying, Amen. <laughs> Amen. This is the only thing you can trust right here. This is it, right here, is the Word of God. And I'm telling you, folks, we need wisdom. We don't need knowledge. We've got so much knowledge, it's coming out our ears. We need wisdom and understanding. And we need to walk in it. We need to walk wisely. If we'll be willing to come to God and say, God, I need this wisdom, please, then he'll instruct our hearts and he'll give us the wisdom we need. He'll do it. Amen? He will do it. And we need to pray in faith, believing that he's going to do it. Amen? Don't doubt. Don't doubt. Believe God's going to give you an answer. Uh, one of the things, I know we're always talking about the RU program, but the RU program is a powerful program if you work the program. And uh, there's been a number of times I learned in RU when it talked about writing down questions that you have for the Lord. And a number of times now, in fact, every time I've written down a question, it wasn't too long before God got back to me in some way with a response. To that question I had. You know, whether it's in talking to someone else or whether I heard a message, uh, not a message like mysterious, but like I heard somebody preaching a message and I was like, oh yeah, that's what, I, that's what I needed to hear. Or something along those lines. God has always responded, amen? And that's what he wants. He wants to be our God. He wants to respond to us. But we've got to be willing to ask him in faith, amen? And then he'll tell us. Now, that's basically the end of, of this message. But let me just say one more thing in closing. And that's, you'll never have true biblical wisdom until you know Jesus as your Lord and Savior. That's where it all begins. No one can ever be truly a wise man and not know Jesus Christ. So if anybody's here this morning or listening over the Internet and you haven't trusted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you need to do that today. 
The Bible says now is the day of salvation. Why does it say now? Because later on it could be too late. You could be dead and in hell in a few minutes. You do not know what a day is going to bring forth. You don't know what's going to happen between you and the next step and the next breath that you take. But if you will put your trust in Jesus Christ, I'm not talking about a church, whether it's Catholic, Methodist, Baptist, Pentecostal, you go to hell being a member of all those churches. I'm talking about you trust Jesus alone, that you see that he died on that cross, paying the penalty for your sin, suffering the wrath of God upon himself so that you don't have to. Amen? And then you say that, hey, I'm a sinner. I'm worthy of death. I, I deserve to die and go to hell. And you say, God, have mercy upon me, a sinner. Forgive me. I believe that Jesus died for my sins. I believe he rose again the third day. And putting all your faith and trust in what Jesus did, in that moment, your spirit becomes born again. And the Lord of glory is now living in, in you and will take you all the way to heaven when you die. Amen? That's the hope that you have as a believer. So if you're listening to the internet, please trust Christ as your Savior today, now. And if you're in this auditorium and you don't know 100% sure that when you die, heaven will be your home, then don't leave that way. Don't leave that way. As we sing the invitation hymn, you come down the aisle, then I'll take you in the privacy of that prayer room over there and show you from the Word of God only how you can be 100% sure that when you die, heaven will be your home. Wouldn't you like to know that? Wouldn't you like to have that insurance? The sure beats walking out of here still not sure. There was a young boy during a snowstorm, was troubled about his soul, didn't know if he's going to go to heaven or hell, and he was really, really upset and didn't know. It plagued his mind and his thoughts. The snow started to come down harder and harder. And the boy noticed that there was a church, and the church was having a service. So he went in the church, not so much to go to church, but to get out of the bad weather. And as he was in there, he heard this preacher preach on salvation, on looking to the Lord and living, look to the Lord and live. And that young boy heard that message and surrendered his life to Christ. He asked Jesus to save him, forgive him of his sin, come into his life. And in that moment, his life was transformed. And he never, from that day until the day that he went to eternity, never doubted his salvation. That young boy was Charles Spurgeon. He went on to be known as the Prince of Pre Preachers and was pastor in the largest congregation in London at the age of 19. It's not that he was some great person, but he came to a moment in time when he stopped wondering and put all his trust in the Lord God Almighty. And God worked through him to do all the rest. So don't leave in uncertainty when you can leave knowing 100% that heaven is your home. Amen. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father in God, we thank you for this time together. We thank you for the Holy Word of God. And Father, we need wisdom. We need wisdom, Lord. We have all this knowledge and technology, and Lord, we do things that our great-grandparents never dreamed of possible. Lord, in just a hundred years, not even a hundred years, we went from inventing an airplane to sending men to moon to land in uh, vehicles on Mars to sending things way out in outer space. We've created cars that can practically drive themselves, yet God we still suffer. We suffer death from a lack of wisdom. Oh God, please, help us to be a people of wisdom. Help us, Lord, as saved people, as individuals that know you, become a people of God that the world would look at and say, you may not like them, but you've got to admit, they've got a wisdom about them that surpasses everything else. Oh God, give us that wisdom. Make us a people full of wisdom, and full of the grace of God, full of the Spirit of God. In Jesus' most precious and holy name I pray, amen. All right, uh, Jeremy, if you'll come and lead us in a hymn of invitation, Cindy will play for us.
And uh, perhaps you need to come this morning, and maybe that's your prayer. You need to ask God for wisdom. He'll give it to you. Maybe you need to come because you need to get saved. As we sing this closing hymn, please come at this time.